Welcome to Is It Fast Live, the weekly show here on Is It Fast, where we bring you the latest news of what's been going on in the car, motorsport, water motorsport, which I've recently learned is the way to actually talk about that kind of thing, and lots of weird and wonderful things in between. This week we have a cornucopia of things to bring you, but I'm not on my own. I am, of course, with Other Stu. How are you, Other Stu? I'm doing very well. I'm just amazed you know the word cornucopia. I don't know what it means. No, I think <laughs> it's some kind of ice cream. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going. We're going to go all gelato on this week's automotive, motorsport, and water-based motorsport news. We have an awful lot to run through. Would you like to know what is on the menu for this week? Yes, please. This week, we are going jogging as Dacia bring us their brand new, long-awaited seven-seater. Lots of goings on from the world of Munich. So Das Auto Show has returned. We talk about new electric Megans. We bring you an urban rebel with a cause. G Wagon is going also environmentally conscious, which is something we never thought that we would say, and much more besides. So, with how are we going to cram this all in? I, do you know what? It is beyond me, but like we do every single week. At 7p of the M, we're going to try and bring you as much as we humanly can while bringing our very, <laughs> very unique take on it. So without further ado, let's bring you the latest news. Hi, I'm Lewis Kent, and you're watching Is It Fast? There's Lewis Kent, the recently double-crowned TCR UK champion, bringing us the latest news. And we start this week with this we did uh we did show this off a little bit last week but they've since revealed the cheapest seven seater family car to come to market so dacia say that this uh particular motor vehicle blends estate car practicality with mpv spaciousness and suv styling it's got 200 millimeters of ground clearance and is 4547 millimeters long so 4.5 meters uh, and is dad's biggest model uh, although it might look like an suv it will be available with uh, only uh two wheel drive uh so doesn't really become an off-roader as such um it's going to come to the uk market in 2022 uh we don't know how much it's going to cost as of yet but we know it's going to cost around about fifteen thousand euros so if i do some quick maths in my mind that's around about twelve thousand nine hundred pounds so the cheapest seven seater on sale i get excited about dacha dacha <laughs> I, I think I reviewed the teaser trailer for this. I referred to it as a bit Range Rovery. Um, <laughs> I would like to apologise to everybody at Land Rover, at Range Rover, anyone who's ever owned a Range Rover, or anyone who's ever actually seen a Range Rover. Uh, my views do not represent <laughs> those of the Is It Fast Media Group, and I hope that we can move on. <laughs> yeah, seven seats. I don't know if I would want seven people knowing I own this. It kind of <laughs> just looks like uh, a red O'Kangle where they put extra windows in the back. Mm. Um, I'm a bit, I'm being a bit cruel here. I don't know. Um, they've also highlighted that there's going to be an extreme limited edition at launch. Limited, as in there's only going to be flight free tires and only two of the doors are going to work. Um, <laughs> but it's got 16 inch wheels on it and it looks mm. absolutely tiny. Mm. The, the wheels, and compared to the. Um, and yeah, but I do quite like the, the usual kind of SUV plastic cladding and the, the carbon effect that's got on it. Bit playing on the inside, but what do you expect for around the 12, 13 grand we're talking about? Um, we, we've spoken fondly about uh, Dacia in the past. You we get have. what you're given. They are very reliable cars. They're very popular. You see enough of them about. So home run. Uh, yeah, you're, 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 I think Dacia as a whole, are a, uh, they do good things for the world of motoring and good things for the automotive world. Uh, I quite like this. I think it's important that there are cheap large family solutions to uh, to mobility frankly i think it looks good i think it's as dacia progress they get further and further away from the renault spare parts bin uh, which i think is a good thing um yes it doesn't look range rovery 
So, yeah, I agree with others, Stu, there. Uh, his views do not represent the overall uh, thoughts and uh, general approach from the Is It Fast Media group. But this is, uh, I think this is a good thing. So, yeah, I won't dwell on it. Uh, if you buy one, fair play. Um, I won't I won't be, but only because I don't need a car with seven seats. I think that's probably the most diplomatic way that I can, uh, that I can put that, given... Um, I would probably go for a Dacia Duster. Yeah, if I had, I if I had, if yeah. I had to pick one, that is the one that I would go for. But tell us in the comments what do you think of the brand new Dacia Jogger and its seven C. Hi, other Stuart here. You're tuning in to Is It Fast. We move on to a cousin, if you will, of the Dacia family. We are talking about Renault. So as some of our viewers and listeners may be aware, the Munich Motor Show is currently going on where lots of interesting cars are being shown to the world. And one of those is this. This is the brand new Megane, Renault Megane, E-Tech. Uh, so you can see that it is very similar to its uh, combustion-driven Megan Brethren. Looks very similar. I would say recognizable as a Megan, made famous by Alan Partridge. Uh, the E-Tech comes with a choice of two power outputs, uh, an electric motor with 128 brake horsepower or 215, two battery sizes, 40 kilowatt and 60 kilowatt, uh, claimed range between 186 and 292 miles respectively and the quickest version of this will get you to 62 miles an hour in an alleged 7.4 seconds not an important stat given it's going to be a family electric cruiser uh, it's going to be in competition with probably the volkswagen id3 again we're not entirely sure on pricing but you're looking at around about the 30 grand mark uh, what do we think of the megan uh, tech um yeah i think also you probably nissan leaf as well Maybe. Yes, um, yes, good shout, good shout. Um, with that, something I did read from the brief that they'd sent us over, um, you're able to go from a 15 to an 80% charge in under 30 minutes for that kind of 180 uh, mile range. Okay. Thank goodness we're starting to kind of get these type of numbers in it. It was always going to be the biggest issue with regards to mm -hmm. the electric cars, the charging periods. You don't want to be sitting around a motorway service station for four or five hours <laughs> um, every every time. Um, it does look a little bit like the Renault have put their um, uh, Volkswagen ID4 in the tumble dryer and shrunk it a wee bit. <laughs> My first thoughts were, it, it kind of looks like a, a, a Scenic with a crossover, mm. but it's a Megane. It's, I wouldn't necessarily look at the profile of that and think Megane, personally. Okay. Um, okay. And again, kind of, they're, they're boasting about their um, commitment to the environment with a grand total of 27 kilograms of recycled plastic being used in this. As, I don't a know grand as total of 27 kilos. I mean, that doesn't yeah. sound like a lot, does that? I, I don't think it's worth bragging about. Um, no. Maybe I'm being a bit negative. It does have a nice shape on it, like the front, like the grill on it. It does have some nice kind of leather detailing on the seats in the interior. Uh, it'll, it'll do well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I like the front, and I like the side pro, and I like the new Renault badge. Yes, and I like Megans. I've I've had a Megan before in my life, and it was okay. And I think that's what the planet needs: okay electric cars. Until we go to hydrogen, yes. big big. Point. But tell us in the comments what you think of the all-new Renault Megan Utec all-electric variant. Hi, I'm Stuart, and I'm the host of Is It Fast, the podcast that talks about planes, trains, and automobiles. No, not the film from the 80s with that podgy fellow who was a very good actor. He was a very good actor. That's uh, that, is a, that is a fact uh, and much missed. Um, but luckily, we enshrined in video format. From one electric motor vehicle that probably doesn't get your engine whirring rather than revving, given the EV element of it, to another. This, <laughs> I know, it's very <laughs> exciting. This is the Cupra Urban Rebel. Uh, it's a concept car. Uh, not given us all the details, but here are some 
of what we think is going to happen. We reckon it's going to be seen. 392 brake horsepower uh, of powering 0 to 62 3.2 seconds. The aero on this is absolutely bonk. It is designed to be a concept of what is going to be the overall smaller platform uh, of electric vehicles coming from the VW group. Uh, so this is going to be cousins with the ID2, which has been revealed this week in concept form from Munich. The sporty uh world of the v it's probably paving the way for further cupra uh motorsport and motor racing cars uh possibly possibly even a one make motor series taking part all over the world cupra who are taking part in the pure etcr so the electric touring car championship at the moment so this actually makes a lot of sense when you think about motorsport and then motor but what an absolute beast right this is beautiful. Uh, this is coming to a Fast and Furious film near you. They must be up to about number 27 by now. Um, <laughs> Wayne Griffiths um, described um, the Urban Rebel as uh, the uh, radical interpretation of the company's urban electric car. I cannot help but feel that Urban Rebel is going to be what the Daily Mail readers are going to start calling this or anyone that uses it. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's going to be basic version in about the 17 grand. A couple of little boys with Burberry baseball caps. Very excited by that. Mm -hmm. But this is gorgeous. Look at the front of that nose. We're, we're seeing it right now. The, the shark nose, the uh, triangular headlights, the back spoiler. It, it is stunning. Con concept or not, I'll love to see kind of where where the real version kind of ends up. Uh, I love Cupra. I love Cupra as a brand. I love what they're making. We're very lucky to test the Cupra Ateca. Uh, when that first arrived on these shores, we've also uh, done uh, test driven some Cupra Leons. Videos on those are available over at Is It Fast uh, via our TV uh, streams. But they just keep getting better and better. And they're really pushing the envelope. Fair enough, it's a, it's a concept. But we've seen a number of Cupra concepts over the years. And by the time they come into production, they don't. I mean, they change, but they don't change all that much. And this, this really got me going. I, I, I am very excited about this. And the fact that Cooper haven't deviated from their ethos since they were spun off by Sayat and V-Dub. I think, I think they're in incredible. You can, you, you're not going to go in and buy a Sayat and be too worried that your Cooper is just going to be a bit more of an expensive Sayat and, expense, and a quicker, quicker Sayat. I think those days are over, and this is just the epitome of well done, chaps, or yeah. buen hecho, muchachos, because of course Cooper are Spanish. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think I'd, I'd nab one. I reckon. So you're saying they're coming out at possibly seventeen grand, right? That seems to be what they're suggesting. Yeah. Okay. I imagine we'd take a lot of the cool looking stuff off of that, but still, <laughs> it's still <laughs> like it's still incredible. It. Uh, I think it's. Um, possibly world beating uh, i'd be yeah. surprised if 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 a cooper doesn't if cooper don't go on to even bigger and better things um because they are they are doing incredibly well at the moment that is going to be a very popular model if it looks anything like what the concept is as you said they don't beat far off the track when it comes to these things so mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be it'll be encouraging i agree i i'm very excited to see uh, to see the Cooper Urban Rebel in whatever form it takes when it starts hitting showrooms and uh, general roads near you soon. But tell us in the comments, what do you think of the brand new concept, Cooper Urban On Is It Fast? Right here on Is It Fast? Right here on Is It Fast? Right here. From This is a very electric heavy show just so we're all completely and totally clear. <laughs> did, did you ever do the electric slide at a wedding? That's a, that's a good dance. That's, that's one that aunties and grandkids can get up and do together. Uh, I was always too worried about not being able to get back up again. Fair call. So, um, so that is something I avoid. But tell us in the comments, did you ever do the electric slide? Are you still doing the electric slide? Why do people do the electric slide? It's timeless. It is timeless. Well, we're is bringing it back. This is what is it fast is going to achieve today? We are bringing back the, the electric thing. slide to the discotheques. Um, to the discotheques. <laughs> we'll double whammy it. Talking of electric lights, 
and discotheques and bringing things from the 70s into the nowsy days. Check this out. Uh, this is the um, <laughs> this is the, the electric G wagon uh, shown to us uh, again from Munich. Um, it's uh, currently just in model format, um, but they are having to electrify what is traditionally a quite a gas guzzling SUV. Uh, but they're turning it into a futuristic one. So available from 2025, allegedly. We don't know what powertrain it's going to be running, but probably the same kind of thing that we're seeing in all the EQ series across Mercedes at the moment. Uh, it's going to have massive wheels, massive rear end, uh, but it's essentially just a modern G-Wagon. Um, you don't like this much, do you? I mean, I like this. The, whoever in the design department went, uh, we'll stick some Jetson-looking buildings behind it, pop, pop it on a plinth, with essentially um, a, a, a Flash Gordon-esque type gentleman. Yeah. Um, What's that in the sky? It's light man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of this, I've got to be honest. This, um, what they call it, the, the G-Wagon. I'm guessing that uh, Box on Wheels was already taken. Um, four <laughs> motors, for one for each wheel. Unfortunately, it can't drive away from itself. Um <laughs> They, they are offering, uh, they're, sorry, they're saying that it's going to be a 400-mile range on it. Uh, again, rapid charge, uh, mm -hmm. we, we've discussed this earlier, which is probably good because when the kind of the angry villagers arrive with their burning torches and pitchforks to kill this Frankenstein's monster, you'll need to get away pretty <laughs> sharpish. Um, that is so hard. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to town on this one. This is just ugly. Have you seen the grill as well? It honestly looks like it should be Pac-Man running along the front. Yeah, I like it. So oh, I dude. I know, and apparently we're all allowed freedom of speech. But the so G Wagons, I've liked G Wagons since they've been around. I like the originals from the way back in the when. I I've enjoyed uh, the most recent iteration of combustion driven G Wagon. The AMG 63 version of that is an absolute beast. It's not very kind to the planet. But I think it's got a certain I don't care about you uh, aesthetic and feel, which, although personally isn't what I go for in motor vehicles, I challenge anyone not to feel good behind the wheel of a G-Wagon. The entire Mercedes range is going electric. They've been selling G-Wagons for £100,000 plus for the last kind of since time of memorial. This was always going to happen. There's been lots and lots of Mercedes uh, updates from the Munich show. Uh, far too many for us to go through right now. We'll be issuing a, a separate set of details on that. But but I think this is the standout Mercedes of that show. Uh, I think it's great. I like the locators on, on the wing mirrors. I like the grill. Uh, I like the roof rack lights up so that you can get a nice tan from it. Uh, I think the wheels are heinous and therefore is a big tick from me. And it will charge and run on electric, which is what we're all going to have to do for a bit anyway. So that's... Do you realize that they've actually got the G symbol on the roof as well? Yeah. 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 I, couldn't, I couldn't find that in the pack. Oh. Um, but I just, I just enjoy, the, I enjoy the back there, how they've illuminated. I mean, they've basically tried to yeah, make I it quite look like more that. modern. Yeah, see? I mean, that's, yeah. you know, that's cool. The, um, the redeeming feature is where we keep the spare wheel. Is that... Yeah, I mean, admittedly, if that's where we're at with stuff, then we're scraping the barrel. But at the um, same time, it's quite I will be kind, impressive. like you, I do like the, the, the large round headlights. The interior of it is pretty smart as well. But, God, £100,000, I think I could do better for my money. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but there's always, an, there's always a market for a G-Wagon, and it's predominantly in central London where yeah. these four by four very capable off-roaders do naturally belong uh this is this is the reality of it you know why why get uh a, a, an explorer for the wild west when you can get an urban explorer for everything that you need tell us in the comments if you're going to be one of the people that will be buying the brand new all-electric g-wagon when it becomes available I walk around naked in denmark and it's not illegal
Apparently that's right. You can walk around then work Denmark uh, naked and it's not illegal. Uh, we're just going to very quickly touch on some news that has been coming out of the Formula One paddock this, and it's not illegal. Uh, we're just going to very quickly touch on some news that has been coming out of the Formula One paddock this week. Uh, for legal reasons, I'm going to refer to Formula One as Formula A. Uh, because every time we talk about Formula A on Is It Fast Live, uh, Formula A get a hold of us and tell us that it should be Formula No. We're not going to let you broadcast your shows. Uh, so we long suspected that uh, the merry-go-round that is the driver swap out uh, that happens every single year in the championship uh, would be coming soon. And it has done. So this week, uh, obviously, we already knew that Valtteri Bottas was going to be moving on. I think we kind of felt that in our waters. Uh, he has this week signed for Alfa Romeo Racing with Sauber and Orlen or whatever order that's in. Um, so let's just dissect that very, very quickly. Uh, how do we feel about Valtteri Bottas going to Alfa Romeo? I've always liked him as a driver. Um, chance to kind of come along and be a bit of a new challenge. Mm. Um, I don't think we'll be seeing him too far up the grid, bless him, uh, mm. in the Alfa Romeo. Um, but he can always cause problems during races. He knows how to frustrate the, those behind him. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think lots of teams will be are signing on to the fact that obviously there's huge amounts of changes in, in the F1 car next year and everybody rightfully i think most teams are saying oh well, well we've not done too much in development the last two years because the change of regulation the change of car the covid crisis all the rest of it um but next year this is the year that we're going to do it and i think yeah i think valtteri is young enough and, and exp but also experienced enough uh to add overall mechanical and driving know-how to that team but of course that leaves a seat at mercedes and at time of recording uh, we are saying that George Russell has gone to Mercedes. So that has been confirmed. Uh, I mean, it wasn't exactly a secret. We all knew it was going to happen, uh, but that's been confirmed. Uh, Jorge Russell to Mercedes. What do we reckon? Yeah, as, as my mum would call it, a well-kent tale, uh, <laughs> that one. Um, well, kind of knew it was coming. Yeah. He's definitely been knocking on the door, obviously getting his... Um, podium second place finish recently under obviously the um uh, the waters of belgium mm -hmm. but no i think this guy's got a, a promising future and yeah definitely one for mercedes and see why they why they won. i agree i think he did a great job when he when he um filled in for lewis uh last year he's obviously been doing really well for williams this year in a car that is not as competitive as it uh, just not as competitive as other motors on the grid and doing well. Uh, and he is a Mercedes driver being promoted. So a Mercedes junior driver has ended up in a, in, in a prime seat, I think the first time since, since Lewis. Um, so and that worked out not too bad for them. It's worked out not too bad. Right. So there we have it. Uh, just a small nod. Uh, that does mean that there is uh, a seat left to fill at Williams uh, our money on that one is yeah is is six foot five Stuart Wilson. Uh, he will be joining Williams to fit in the car. Uh, it's probably going to be an Alex Albon uh, or Nick De Vries. Uh, I think um, Ooh, that, that's yeah. that's my money on that one. Uh, Albon obviously still a contracted racer for Red Bull. So whether a Williams team with a Mercedes power unit will allow a Red Bull driver into their midst we are yet to see uh, which is why it makes potentially slightly more ch more sense for nick de Vries, who's the formula e world champion and mercedes driver to make the jump into a mercedes driven williams but tell us what you think who is going to be driving in the williams next year how is george russell going to get on as lewis hamilton's team role when you've got two very ambitious drivers in the same team and how is Valtteri Bottas going to get on at Alfa Romeo? All very deep and meaningful questions but there is still a Formula One season going on and if you want to keep up with all the latest results and keep up to date with ev not just in the world of say Formula 1 but also in the world of your favourite motorsport discipline then we would strongly recommend the following results hub all motorsport results all in one place and now there's an app 
take results with you on the go as we bring you the latest standings from championships around the world. And there's more. Use the app to see who is racing and where with our handy calendar feature. Download the app now. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place, all from the ease of your mobile telephony device or potentially even, I mean, that was you holding a phone, not doing something, uh, Benny Hill. And, it, yeah. and, and um, oh, voice went there, it got, really got me. Uh, and uh, your laptop or desktop device is completely free to create an account and to personalize your profile, check out when and how your latest favorite championship races are taking place and the results therein. We strongly recommend that you use it. Every single week we trawl the internet for the latest, the greatest, the most incredibly expletive field. We go, mmm, from the watch world. And this week is no different. So what time is it, Stu? It's time to TikTok. It's time to TikTok. Neither of us wearing a watch today. Uh, that's right. Every single week. We... <laughs> Every single week, neither of us have a watch on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We do love watches, we swear. Every single week, we bring you the latest news. This week, to honour the greatest spy of all, Omega are bringing us this. that's not a watch this is a watch that sounded a lot more danish than sean connery but this um, this it was also is also a bit a, crocodile dundee what it, 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 this is the brand new bond omega watch uh it is identical to 007's watch in no time to die the latest bond film delayed of course by things outside of their control in cinemas and theatres, uh, 42 millimeter Seamaster, uh, strong yet lightweight grade two titanium, and it sports a brown topical aluminium bezel ring and dial. Uh, it's slightly slimmer than the standard diver, uh, 300 millimeter models, uh, 300 meter models. Sorry, um, it's got uh, a sapphire crystal doming glass, uh, grade two titanium mesh bracelet, which I think looks lovely. Uh, if you are a spy, it will do well. Uh, it's got magnetic resistance, of course, and has achieved the industry's highest and chronometric performance. And what do we think? Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to tick talk. Uh, no, I, I absolutely <laughs> love this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think this is absolutely Omega. I've always done right with the Bond watches. Um, although I think traditionals would maybe kind of argue that uh, Bond should wear a Rolex. Mm -hmm. However, um, since Goldeneye was at 95, mm -hmm. Bond has worn an Omega timepiece on the screen and it's never done him wrong. Uh, I love the, the mix of the black, silver, kind of the copper tones as well on this. Um, something that we're also seeing from Tudor and Breitling watches of late. Mm. It even comes an extremely stylish kind of canvas style pouch that is just stunning. But I know you're about to break my heart. How much is it? It's can... 7,880 oh. pounds. So it's yeah. qu quite expensive. Um, but even though it's a themed watch, so 007, obviously, you could wear it and it is passable as a watch for multiple occasions. So you're not wearing yeah. this to the opera or to some sort of gala ball or gala bingo. Well, you could wear it to gala bingo. Um, but for an everyday, kind of looking good and all the rest of it, banging i think it's really good they've done a good job of not making it too bond you could have you know you, you could have what's his face you could have bond's face on it on the on the on the front you could have you know a small car running through the, like an aston martin running down a strap and, and and all the rest of it uh but they haven't gone ott it's very much an omega 
that stands up to being an Omega, right? No, very much so. Yeah, uh, the the ones that kind of have the the double O seven or the the name of the film or that on the face, mm. they do put me off a bit because yeah. obviously they're still fantastic timepieces, but they've got so much longevity. And if somebody sees it, it looks like you're wearing a promotional item, mm-hmm. not necessarily a watch you've spent almost eight thousand pounds on. This is the thing, right? You don't want to be running around like you've got it out of a Happy Meal when you're spending seven eight thousand pounds of hard-earned cash on a on a watch residual values we are not watch experts so i couldn't tell you uh, i don't think this is a limited piece i think you can basically order them until i imagine they just run out um but um that I, I, you know they stand in good stead there's going to be enthusiasts all over the world that are interested in these kind of things uh, i'll probably stick to buying the 007 themed heineken uh, which yeah. has been a thing for the last few years um but overall I think it's very, very nice. Congratulations to you, Omega, for producing a very subtle yet very uh, considerate homage yes. to the man who has murdered many partners accidentally or on purpose. So well done. But tell us in the comments, what do you think of the Omega 007? Another Alan Partridge reference there. Uh, it's very Alan Partridge heavy show. Uh, Omega, as opposed Seamander. to the slick professionalism that we always have. Uh, true. It's 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 borderline at best. But tell us what you th- tell us what you think of that. Some of you aware of uh, the news uh, may well have come across this. Uh, the news this week uh, that a collector of cars. Uh, has decided to sell 174 of his barn finds. They're called barn barn find cars um, uh, being sold at auction. Uh, so 174 classic vehicles that have been hoarded f- from uh, the early 80s uh, have basically gone up for auction in a warehouse in Tottenham because the local council who own the warehouse need it gone. Uh, so there we go. We reckon it's going to be a million pounds worth of cars in there um, and raise something like that at auction you've got to go to london barn finds and you can place an offer on these um i mean it's what what a weird and wonderful automotive world we live in where this is a thing um what do we what do we think of this i mean there's been some there's there's too many cars to show you um but there's some real beauties i mean this look at this proper old school m series in there um amongst a, a whole host of other beautiful things but you're going to be making a bid on these dusty, eroded um, cars that need a bit of love and a bit of TLC and a bit of work? Uh, I've got to be honest, the, the the real winners here are going to be the Eastern European gentlemen who run the local hand valeting service. They're going to be rubbing their hands together. Um, this is going to look awesome for them. Um, this is the kind of the warehouse Indiana Jones would be in if he was really into his cars. Um It does look absolutely stunning um, for it. I've just no idea. Apparently, nobody knew this was there. Well, obviously, Uh, the council knew the building was there, but nobody knew what was inside. uh, How did they have this much space in North London? I know. Uh, I know. The the collection, obviously, a lot of the cars going back way, way further. But the building kind of leasing has only been there about 10 years. So this guy has put in roughly one and a half cars per month Mm. into this. Uh, into this uh, but i think kind of you really hit the, uh, the 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 nail on the head for it when uh, you said this guy is not a car lover he's a car hoarder these cars have not been looked after i don't know how many of their engines will have seized up um mm-hmm. the fluids would have been dried out um but um <sighs> It's just a bit of a waste and it's kind of quite sad. Hopefully they're going to be purchased yeah. by people who are going to love and restore them. Uh, it's a, that's it, what I'd say. I, I agree with everything you say there. It's so odd. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen often. But <laughs> I just think it's odd, right? I mean, if, if, I, I guess there's a love of the of cars in there and it's really, I mean, it's a cool story and, you know, it's always good to know that there's lots of space in North London if anyone ever needs it, I guess. But at the same time, it's it's odd. I mean, he's kind of, I guess there's, it's, there's two, and tell us what you think in the comments, but I guess there's two, there's two schools of thought 
here's a here's a human being that has saved a lot of cars. Here's a human being mm-hmm. that has potentially wrecked a load of cars. I mean, they're in there, they're safe, they're covered in like filth, but they're not kind of too buggered. I mean, I know some of them are covered in bird poop and and one thing and the other, but at the same time, and and people are going to pick up bargains like the 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 BMW that we see here. Um, th- there's a chance that's going to go for something like five grand and five grand is not a lot of money for a a bmw m spec car from the 80s it's just not it's just not heard of but i mean you're gonna have to do a lot of work to it you know god knows what the interiors are like probably fine in most cases but if something's burrowed its way in there and from if a car's been in there since you know the 80s or a car from the 80s has been in his possession for that long and it's not been you know there's there's four generations of badger that's potentially in there kind of make, making a, a, a home for themselves. You know, like there's a bunch of borrowers yeah. there that are basically fighting Tottenham council. So they don't lose their home. So I get that. But at the same time, it's not, it's not great. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I, I, I was, I've, I had a little look through to see what there was. Um, there's some really interesting things, but um, I, I don't, I don't, I think unless you're really into it or there's that unicorn car that you've always wanted and you, you want to put the time and effort into restoring it, um, then great. This is perfect. If not, it's, this is not the same as going down a, a car auction and getting yourself something that has been put in on part X. It's just not the same thing. No. But, um, but there we have it. Many odd things happen in London and this is yet, an, yet another. But tell us in the comments. What do you think of a million pounds worth of dusty cars in a warehouse in North London that could potentially, potentially be you? You've tuned into Is It Fast with both Stewarts. Aren't you lucky? Yes, you are. Lucky, lucky people tuning into Is It Fast with both Stews, where you get two Stews for the price of none. Everybody has a favourite dead person from the past that has re-emerged as ghost figure onto the TV, but very few car manufacturers have chosen to name a car after them. The new Casper is coming. Casper. Thank you. Oh, what a delightfully cheery advert. I know. Uh, now people are going to come flying in saying Casper the friendly ghost and Casper the car is spelt differently or whatever, but fine, whatever, I don't care. Um, this is the <laughs> this is the Hyundai Casper. Uh, the Hyundai Casper is a uh, tiny little SUV from Hyundai. Uh, it's only for the South Korean market. Um, and I love, I love little adverts like that i just think they're so cute um the inspiration for the name is not the ghost that uh, had a lot of brothers and stuff that were mean to him um but it's in fact named after a skateboarding trick which is why we see a skateboard there in the uh in the promotional material uh so if anybody's wondering a casper is when the board is flipped upside down and back to front all in one swift movement um but it's all about uh compact suv motability for the casper you won't be able to buy it in the uk but isn't it isn't it just cute don't you think it's just like a beautiful little car <laughs> I, I, I quite like it yeah i must say actually i'm extremely disappointed you knew what a casper was on a skateboard i i wanted to be down with the kids as part of the audio <laughs> clip here so you've ruined that for me thank you sorry mate uh, I, I didn't it was written down and i nabbed it <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. No, it's, it's been a while since I was on a skateboard, so I would no doubt break my head if I chose to try it. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you not think it's kind of practically identical to the Suzuki Ignis? Um, yes, I do. Yes, or even, I do. I'm going to say it, Super Mini-esque as well. Just get it with a different badge on it. Yeah. Also, yeah, Maybe. I think they're very, I think they're very, they're both designed to do the same thing. You know, yeah. they're, they're small SUVs. They're all about having maximum uh, size and comfort on the inside whilst being minimal on the outside so that they can run around the streets of Seoul, yeah. uh, which I've never been to Seoul, but I'm assuming some of the streets are small, just like in any other city in the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it, it'll get you around. I, th- I think it's I think it's cute. What I, I like, like about... It. Yeah, I That's like it. You. Yeah, 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 no, I like it. I like it. You've and got the muscular shape on it. Yeah. A good in profile, crisp lines. Mm. Yeah. 
I, I think the cladding is quite cool as well. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd quite happily drive one of them. I know yeah, it's me, for, me too. Uh, our South Korean friends who tune in. Hi guys. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Hopefully, um, hopefully some of them end up uh, in the import market. Um, and 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 end up over here. That'd be quite nice. Um, I, qu- I quite like it when when weird and wonderful uh, cars from Asia arrive because uh, you never quite know what you're going to get. Um, but there we go. Tell us in the comments what do you think um, of the of the Hyundai Casper? We think it's ruddy cute, is what we think, and uh, probably quite good and useful and practical. Um, going from Small SUVs to large, silly SUVs that nobody needs. Uh, this, this is the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, Range Rover this week uh, gave us this. This is the Range Rover Sport SVR Ultimate. Uh, it is probably going to be the last ever SVR of its type before Range Rover move over to their updated platforms and then eventually to all electric power. Uh, you've got gigantic, I mean, ridiculous 22-inch wheels. Not sure what that's going to do to the ride quality, um, but it'll do something. Uh, and then uh, gigantic, silly engine, five liter turbocharged V8, uh, 0 to 16, 4.3 seconds, 567 brake horsepower, uh, 176 top speed if you can get it to that, uh, and uh, will cost you upwards of 123,900 quid. Just to give you an idea, the standard SVR uh, is a hundred odd grand. Um, so I'm not fond of SVRs. I think they're cool. I have driven a few. Uh, I enjoy them when I drive them. But if you're going to own one, you've got to get your head checked. Um, I, I won't spend a lot of time talking about the latest SVR Ultimate. Uh, they're cool, but genuinely, like, there's just so much better stuff out there for going quickly in comfort with, with size, personally. Uh, but there we go, the SVR Ultimate. Yeah, I've, I've always been a fan of Range Rovers. wouldn't dare compare them to any other car. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, when this is clipped up, people will not understand what on earth that was on about in reference to. <laughs> yeah, apparently, buyers can choose from a range of different colors uh, that they're actually putting flakes of reflective glass into the base coat. So, Land Rover are saying that this is going to give an intense star like sparkle. Um, I needed to do the actions of the hands there. And uh, so, basically, this car is most certainly coming to uh, a Taui Love Island star near you soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. I quite like the, the black contrasting roof. Uh, the mirror caps look really cool as well. I like the front grille. There's other good details as well. But yeah, for the top range, 124 grand. Yeah, that's uh, obviously, again, needed around the, the streets of Essex, clearly. They're rubbish, mate. I mean, they're... they're... I mean, they're rubbish in terms of they're not. If you love fast cars and quick stuff, and you want to go quickly and, and and all the rest of it, I just don't know why you'd get one. I just don't know why you'd do it. I just it, they they're ridiculous. You know, they 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 lose everything that a Range Rover is and should be in order to facilitate the speed and some of the dynamic qualities that that brings with it. They're just not useful anymore. Just get a Range Rover Sport HSE if you're that bothered. You know what I mean? Like, just do that. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you're much better off. And if you want something quick and useful and dynamic, get a Audi RS6 Avant. That's my expert take on it. Um, so there you go. The SVR Ultimate Range Rover Sport. Tell us in the comments what you think of that. You're tuning into Is It Fast? And lastly... Uh, we have some motorsport to talk about. It's been a very, uh, very motorsport shy show this week. Uh, mm. But um, the esports world, the world of sim racing, and the world of sim racing drivers within, is one that we are very proud to be associated with at Is It Fast and our wider accoutrement of television stations and other such things. Uh, and this week saw the commencement of the Blue Streak esports sim racing championship now i'm not going to take anything away from the results uh, what i can tell you is that some of the best drivers in the world to race around spa uh, it's an hour-long race don't worry highlights are available uh, but what an 
absolute drive from this man here. Hello and welcome to Is It Fast, where today we are taking a trip down under and speaking with Joe... T oh wait, no, it's not Joe Tanto. <laughs> it's, it's his lookalikey. It's Mr. Luke King dot racing. But you've come a long way from your convict... I mean, it's that's a record, by the way. The, the quickest length of time to go from speaking to an Aussie from hello to you're all calm. Just for the record, you brought it up. I wasn't going to say. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing double the amount of Ks in one weekend. Second's good, but it's kind of like the silver medal at the moment, right? So, I mean, you're, you're the best of everybody else. It's a beautiful circuit. It's got a Ridges Hotel on the pit lane. I will not drive anywhere without a hotel on the pit lane. I mean, that's pretty pimp. Lo and behold, we were the quickest Audi in Q1. Thank you very, very much for coming on, mate. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, mate. See you guys on Blue Street. And on Blue Streak, you did see him. So all the action took place earlier this week. And we're here to tell you to go back through our social media pages and our YouTube channel to catch some extraordinary racing. I know it's sim racing, but that didn't seem to make any difference. <laughs> it really didn't go. What a what a first race for it. Yeah, we can't talk about it. We want we want people to go and watch it. You will not be disappointed, guys. Um, yeah, very yeah. entertaining stuff. Yeah, yeah, by very and, very skilled drivers. And for bonus points, tell us in the comments. Uh, go away, watch it, come back, watch the end of this, and tell us in the comments. Uh, what did you think of my commentary? It was good, right? No. Touch and go. You did fantastic. Touch and go. Yeah, I mean, once, once, yeah, 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 it was an interesting experience. But there we go. Uh, the Blue Streak Esports Championship uh, Sim Racing at its very best, live right here on Is It Fast? First race, like I say, has already taken place. So the championship will start to form, mutate, evolve, and mature over the next few weeks. So make sure that you head over and sign up to Is It Fast? Followers on your social media platform of choice so that you don't miss a single one of these live shows, but also so you don't miss any live racing or all the other beautiful, wonderful things that we do. Thank you very much. And I think that brings us to the end of what is our traditional midweek conversation between us both as the two stews are about to bid you goodbye. But thank you. What did you, today's show, right? Good? Good show? I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we, we did cram a lot in. We promised we were going to. We I don't did. think we skipped over anything. I Bit of controversy. So. Uh, massive highlight that we actually agreed on something for a change. I know. I yeah. Know. I know. So, so there we have it. That's not a highlight reel at all. Yeah. It's, it's just just the four, the one time that we agree with each other, and uh, and it was a weird weird thing to happen. Next week, we have a slightly different show. Uh, I won't I won't tell you what, because that would ruin the surprise. Uh, mm. But uh, we will be uh, sharing something ever slightly different at 7 o'clock uh, Wednesday, mainly because I'm on my holidays. Uh, so uh, we will be sharing something a little bit special from the archives, plus some latest news. So make sure that you tune in, as always, 7 p.m. Wednesday, British Standard Time for myself and other Stu to bring you hand-picked gestures, loveliness from the world of motorsport, watches, and automotive. But thank you, as per usual, for watching Is It Fast? And we shall catch you.